Hello, everybody. I hope everybody is well. I'm happy to be here. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Waka Opareki. I'm a photographer and I'm a director. Um, I'd say I'm mainly passionate about uh, sharing authentic stories, down-to-earth stories, um, but using surreal and unique elements to emphasize the individuality within each experience. Um, I'll tell you today about how I developed the style that I have at the moment and how that style led me to shooting one of my most recent album covers. So, I mean, uh, I can't really talk about where I am right now without talking about where I started, which was even before I started doing photography. And my style began to develop actually when I was uh, probably like around uh, my foundation course when I was in Ravensbourne. and I did a one-year foundation course in fashion and textiles. Back then I was experimenting with fashion design, textiles, graphic design, styling, um, all kinds of things. Um, and community was such a massive part of that uh, experimental journey. Um, back then, um, I would just meet with people in events, uh, meet with people from Ravensbourne, from school, from just being out and about. And um, we actually were really blessed to have like a really good um, situation where we would just come up with the craziest ideas that were totally beyond our reach and just working together to see how we could create them. And pretty much 100% of the time, we never achieved what we were aiming to achieve. But in the process, we would achieve something else that that would be really interesting um, and really um, help us, I guess, just have a safe space to really experiment and um, understand what it is that we liked, what we didn't like. Everything was very sort of DIY and, you know, everybody just putting together what they can. But um, it, that was like a really big part in, in terms of, you know, back then, you know, we would make magazines together and, you know, um, do photo shoots together, do exhibitions together um, where we'd, you know, shoot in, whether it's doing an exhibition in our uni or whether it's in somebody's house or finding some funding, a little bit of funding to do it in a space. And in that, we, you know, used to hype each other up and, you know, make each other super excited about things. And a lot of us now have actually, you know, built our platforms or developed and gotten to places where um, we're now actually really successful. But I don't feel like a lot of us would have been there if we didn't have that space to uh, experiment and just feel safe around each other at the beginning. Um, and so, yeah, obviously I've spoken about experimentation. And I think that this is super key in developing the style. I mean, for me, I was like, didn't really have any concepts behind what I was doing. I just knew that um, there were certain energies that I like to see. There were certain things that made me excited. So I would, you know, maybe, maybe I see something that somebody else does, I like it. And I'll be like, let me try and recreate it, knowing that I don't have the tools to actually recreate it. But in the process of trying, I'll find something new that I like. Um, and so, yeah, I used to do a lot of like collages, a lot of layering, um, a lot of, you know, trying to make outfits and stuff to like style my models. Um, and I had a lot of fun with that, but eventually uh, I got a bit tired of it. And so I kind of like left that to the side um, and then moved on to shooting in more like outdoor locations. And here um, at the moment, I didn't realize it um, until actually somebody told me that, oh, how comes you're, uh, you gravitate to like, blue skies and bright colors. And I was like, do I? Um, I didn't realize. Um, but it turns out that actually um, within myself, I was exploring loneliness and I was exploring um, desiring peace and freedom. And this was all very subconscious. I was just going out, you know, with my friends who I've, you know, vibes with and just, you know, just playing around and messing around and seeing what happened. But actually this ended up being my subconscious mind talking to me and um, telling me how much, you know, I was just in a space of continual oppression and feeling alone and dark and I just wanted to see brightness and I wanted to see space and I gravitate to things like the sky and the sea because they feel infinite and they feel like, you know, so freeing and like nothing can touch me there. Um, so then, um, at this point, I was beginning to realize that photography is a bit deeper to me than me, a bit deeper to me than you know just making cool things. But actually, this was a way for me to really explore myself, a way to express myself. Um, I decided that I wanted to do this photo series based on like visualizing emotion, 
And in the process of doing that, um, I was like, you know what, actually, wouldn't it be cool if I added sound and if I added movement? So I thought, let me just film it on my camera and video it. Um, so that led me to do my first ever um, short art film called Out Loud, um, where I pretty much just did everything myself except for um, acting it, where I got a model to act in it, and I also got uh, a producer to make the music. Uh, but everything else was myself, and since then I've created a few more uh, short art films, um, and in the process of making them, um, I, I learned a bit more, and my style developed a bit more. I, it was a bit more restricting, like grading, Film footage is very different to grading, you know, uh, digital f uh, photo. Um, so that made me sort of tune in to what colors are my priorities, what textures are my priorities, um, trying to, you know, create um, feelings, but not having the budget to go to crazy locations or create amazing sets. Like, how can I now use VFX to sort of create these same feelings and textures and um, emotions that these spaces would have given me? Um, and in the process of doing that, I began to sort of revert back to my collage aesthetic that I sort of started with and combining that with like the emotional elements that were with my work. Um, so ultimately, I'd say the key part at this point is that I realized that uh, my style comes from within. And I think if you are connected with yourself in, on some sort of level, you um, have, you know, you give yourself the freedom to express yourself in an unfiltered way, then a style will naturally come out of you because you are an individual person and naturally you will have individual things that only you will want to do or only you will like and that will naturally touch other people as well. Um, so now that's led me to pretty much where I am now where I'm a full-time freelance photographer and film director. I work with all kinds of brands, all kinds of people and all kinds of projects. Um, and here are just some examples of where you can see where I've sort of used collage and I've used layering and I've used Photoshop and I've used uh, these sort of surreal elements um, to create works for other people and for clients. Um, but I must say that my favorite stuff to do is actually album artwork and personal projects. Um, and the reason that is, is because that's where the real stories are. That's where I can actually connect with somebody and I can understand who they are, where they're coming from, or connect with myself, find out what I want to say, and um, I can use these real stories, as I said at the beginning, these real stories, these authentic experiences, these real people, and um, use um, interesting ways to shine a light on what makes these particular stories very individual to these people. Um, and uh, in the process of doing that, I have I ended up working on a the uh, album cover for Koji Radical, and so I was just gonna talk you guys through the process of that. Um, so initially, how I got the job was uh, the creative team reached out to me. Um, Koji said that he was interested in working with me or working um, with some sort of artist who would paint the cover or whatever. So I was just like, cool, whatever. Um, I will uh, like to you know, have a conversation with him and um, understand where he's coming from and if we can connect. Because um, for me, what's really important when it comes to doing an album cover artwork, when it comes to client work, like, I don't need to connect. As long as I you know, like the job and I think that I can deliver it, then it's all good. But when it comes to album artwork, I think because it's a reflection of the artist, I want to actually know that I am the best person um, that can tell this story, or one of the best people, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so me and him, we had quite a few conversations um, where he really sort of broke down to me where he was coming from, uh, what this meant to him, what this project meant to him, and uh, uh, we were able to develop a concept based off of that. Um, so this image on the screen right now was the um, single artwork for his song, War Outside. Um, and uh, at this point, he was, you know, he was telling me how he feels like he sees things that other people don't see um, and that he's, you know, dealing with things and figuring out how to balance um, his sort of emotions and, and the wave and contradiction that, you know, uh, emotions in a human really are. So uh, we thought, you know, how, how could we, you know, create these sort of layers and complexities within human nature, and how can we show all of these things um, in the next few images that you're going to see, um, and then land on the, the purpose of the name behind the album, which is Reason to Smile. 
Um, so yeah, we started off with this close up of his eye and he was saying, you know, it would be cool if he was like looking at a burning bush because he uh, referenced the Bible story of uh, Moses seeing a burning bush and how Moses was the only person that saw it, was the only person that could interact with it. And so we started off with that, trying to keep everything kind of dark and like somber, like, you know, kind of a bit distressed. And then to add the layers onto this story, uh, we move on to pulling away from the eye and seeing the rest of his face. And it's like within the, I guess, the distress and the tension, actually there can be a layer of rebirth, there can be realizing something new, there can be a change and a shift of energy. So this was the next single cover um, for his uh, other song, Gangster, um, where he talks about, you know, noticing his, you know, the work of his mother and his family and the and the importance and impact that that sort of had on his life and, you know, beginning a moment of reflection, basically. And then we move on to the final album cover, which um, for Reason to Smile, where we pull out even further and we begin to see that, you know, despite all the layers that come before, he's able to elevate, he's able to grow, he's surrounded by the people he loves, his mother, his son, his son's mother. Um, and uh, it was really cool for me to, you know, be able to sort of go through the process of, you know, I guess my style, you know, it started off as something that's really personal to me, but I'm able to use that to bring out something that's really personal for somebody else. Um, and, you know, for this, we, we actually got to shoot it on a rooftop. His mum was there, his son was there, everybody in that picture was there doing that thing. And um, we had him standing on a few boxes, looking like he was flying. I just edited that bit out. Um, and we had, you know, the real London skyline there, and I was able to use, you know, this composition, to, you know, having him in the centre, having him flying and free, but still, you know, you know, the people around him being grounded, um, and then also being able to use color to reflect his culture, where he's from, and the vibrancy of the emotions. Um, so yeah, that is how we got there. Um, but thank you all for listening. <laughs>